Heck yes, I love to wear wild shirts. Woo! <laughs> I don't ever pay attention to what I'm wearing half the time. It's just if it's fun, I'm wearing it. And uh, one time I had a shirt that had a bunch of upside down pineapples all over it. I recently learned that that means you're a swinger looking to go swinging. I wore that shirt for three years. <laughs> Nobody asked me to go swinging. Never. <laughs> I'm a country radio DJ. Woo! It's a pretty easy job. The hardest part is when people call in to request songs and they don't know the title or who sings it. <laughs> There's like, it's about Jesus, it's about whiskey, it's about beer, it's about mama, it's about girls, it's about America. That's all of them, okay? <laughs> but I imagine it's way easier than being a death metal DJ. I think that would be hard. Thank you for calling Death Metal 92.5. What would you like to hear? <laughs> I'm the mountain's new metal leader. <laughs> My favorite thing about radio are radio commercials. I love how much energy they have. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And they carry that energy over to commercials for like businesses going out of business. Those commercials, they always sound way too happy to be going out of business. They're just like, this weekend, woo! We did it! We mismanaged our funds! Woo! Yes, everything must go! No financing for five years! We can't afford it either! Woo! <laughs> Free hot dogs, bouncy house for the kids! My kids won't talk to me! Woo! <laughs> I, I always wonder how many takes did it take them to get so excited that they're going out of business. I always wish I could have been in the sound booth for the first few takes, you know, where he's just coming to grips with the reality that his world is crumbling around him. They're like, go now, business commercial, take one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going out of business. <laughs> Cut! We need more energy. Get excited. You're going out of business. <sighs> I, never, I never looked at it that way before. All right, next commercial, more energy. Ready, going out of business, take two. <laughs> We're going out of business. <laughs> This business has been in my family for 78 years. I've been in charge for five months. Woo! Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I live in a small mountain town in Arizona called Sholo, Arizona. There ain't no party like a Sholo party because a Sholo party's done by eight. A lot of old people there. Uh, I love living in a small town. The thing that sucks is you don't ever get the big bands coming through our town. At best, we get the tribute bands. We don't get the red hot chili peppers. We get the red not chili peppers. They almost give it away. Give it away. Give it away now. We don't get George straight. We get George not so straight. We don't get Green Day. We get a Spanish Green Day tribute band. 
called Dia de los Verdes. <laughs> they play their hit song, Idiote de Americana. It's good. And then they have a Spanish corn tribute band open up for them called Elote. <laughs> it's mucho excelente. And my small mountain town, everyone there loves to hunt. And they love to fish. And they all think I'm gay. <laughs> everyone up there's like, dude, you're gay. And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm married and I have two kids. And they're like, no, dude, you're gay. You just don't know it yet. I'm 43 years old. When am I gonna find out? I feel like if you're gonna find out you're gay, you want it to be in your 20s and 30s when it's all coming at you. If I find out I'm gay now, I'm just a middle-aged single gay dude that loves to garden. That's not sexy. Not only when am I gonna find out I'm gay, where? I hope it's home. Alone. Maybe I'm watching The Bachelor. <laughs> like, this is good. <laughs> he is yummy. I'm gay! <laughs> all right, I'm home alone. That would be all right. The I think it would suck to find out. Like, the worst way to find out I'm gay is like maybe when I'm walking one of my daughters down the aisle. <laughs> Like, honey, you look so beautiful. But your husband looks yummy! I'm gay! I'm gay! I ruined my daughter's day! No! That would suck. The worst way would be to find out on my deathbed. When I'm like 96, and all my family's gathered around. Thank you all for coming. I want you all to know I love you very much. I don't want anyone to be sad. I'm going to a better place. But before I go, my male nurse is yummy. I'm gay. <laughs> That would suck. <laughs> People always think I'm gay because I'm a little flamboyant. Are gay people the only ones allowed to be flamboyant? Have you ever tried being flamboyant? It's amazing! <laughs> you should try it. <laughs> In my mountain town, they all think, they're like, you just seem gay because you don't like to hunt. It's not manly. It's like, first of all, I don't think hunting is manly. Have you ever hunted? If you're hunting like the male species, say like the male elk, the bull elk, you know how you get the male elk? By pretending to be a woman elk. They squirt themselves with women's pee, not manly. And then they have a little like elk call whistle and then they blow into it and it goes, I want some elk dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then the elk's like, what? I got some elk dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hunting is just catfishing animals. That's all it is. <laughs> I'm a sexy female elk looking ready to go to pound town. <laughs> just kidding, my name's Bill. <laughs> and you're going on my wall, bitch! <laughs> I'm trying to be manlier. I told my friend, I'm like, maybe I'd be manly if I started vaping. <laughs> and he's like, vaping is not manly. And I started to think about it. I'm like, you know what, you're right. Because if vaping was manly, they would have had the Marlboro Man as their spokesperson years ago. 
but they'd never do that because it would sound like this. After a long day on the rain, wrestling cattle, I like to relax with a nice draw of <laughs> Strawberry Gummy Patch Bear Supreme! <laughs> Not manly! <laughs> Uh, I have daughters, and they say that daughters end up marrying men like their fathers. So I wouldn't be surprised if both my daughters ended up marrying butch lesbians. <laughs> Hello, sir. My name is Rebecca. I love vodka soda, football, romantic comedies, and your daughter. <laughs> Just like her father. <laughs> <laughs> my oldest when she was five years old for her birthday she wanted summertime barbie so i went to the toy store to get her summertime barbie and when i got there all they had were black summertime barbies and i was like crap i'm gonna have to ask for white summertime barbie and they're gonna think i'm racist and i turn around and this lady's like can i help you and she was black and i was like ah! I was like, yeah, do you, uh, do you have a white one? And she's like, why, are you racist? And I'm like, no, 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 I love Black Summertime Barbie. She's my favorite. My daughter's racist. <laughs> I don't know. My body does weird stuff. I got married when I was 19, woo! Which means I've been divorced, woo! <laughs> Everybody always asks, why'd you get married so young? And I tell them, it's because I found a woman that wanted to have sex with me, and I didn't know if that would happen again. <laughs> So I don't know if you played blackjack before, but I was like, I'll stay, I'll stay. You don't hit on 19, ever. <laughs> Married at 19, divorced at 33. Two years later, I remarried the same woman. Dun, dun, dun. That usually has two responses. People that have never been divorced are usually like, oh, that's so romantic. True love does exist. And then you have people that have been divorced and they're like, are you crazy? You were out. One guy came up to me after the show and goes, Dude, you reheated the McDonald's? <laughs> Did you just call my wife McDonald's? Because I'm loving it. <laughs> when we got remarried, we didn't register for gifts. I don't think when you get remarried, you should ever be allowed to register for gifts. Your life's going great. You found someone that wants to love you in sickness and in health. And you're like, yeah, but I also want a hot dog toaster. <laughs> no! The only people that should be allowed to register for gifts are people whose lives are going incredibly wrong. It's like, hey guys, it's me, Steve. I just, I just lost my job and uh, my wife just left me but I'm registered a crate and barrel. <laughs> I could really use some cups. Uh, she took them all. <laughs> One time I messed up instead of crate and barrel, I said cracker barrel. And if you register for your wedding at cracker barrel, I'll get you whatever you want. 
That's true. My wife has big boobs. Woo! And she likes to wear my t-shirts to bed at night. And she ends up boobing them out. And normally I'd be pissed, but now they fit so much better. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> no more Jaffy, Jaffy. My wife's also the farter in the relationship. Wow. <laughs> She's not here. <laughs> she said I could talk about it. Uh, She's the farter. Her farts don't make any noise. They're just silent but deadly. So whenever she farts, I always ask her, did you just fart? And then she always gets mad. And she's like, why do you always need to know if I just farted? And I'm like, because if you did not just fart, we got to get out of here now! Get down! Call the police! Call the gas company! I need a new priest and an old priest! Okay, I farted, you idiot. Uh, my wife and I recently went to a sex shop. <laughs> we went to a sex shop and they had amazing customer service at the sex shop. And you know where I don't want amazing customer service? The sex shop! If I can't find what I'm looking for, I'm leaving. You don't have to pay someone minimum wage to be like, hey, would you like to see that in black? No! <laughs> How do they not have self-checkout at the sex shop? They have it at Walmart. I'm not embarrassed to buy broccoli. <sighs> My wife and I like to role play in the bedroom. We like to like reenact our favorite uh, sexy scenes from our favorite movies. My favorite scene for her to reenact is that scene from Pretty Woman. You know, the one where she's sitting on the piano wearing nothing but a tie except we don't own a piano. We just have a keyboard. And she just knocks it over. And it gets stuck on the laser beam button. Bam, bam! <laughs> Getting a little chubbed up, thinking about it. <laughs> but her favorite movie for me to reenact is that scene from uh, E.T. You know, the one where, uh, Elliot lays the Reese's down to get E.T. to follow him into the bedroom. And I just follow up behind her. Is mama getting wet? <laughs> She's not. Guys, I'm Chris Bennett. Thank you so much. Have a great night.